Will AI replace coding jobs? Short answer, yeah, probably. How soon? Well, that largely remains to be seen. Up until a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't really concerned with AI taking coding jobs. I tend to agree with thinkfluencers in the space like Mike Solana, who says in his newsletter Pirate Wires, artificial intelligence is a serious and possibly or probably paradigm altering technology. There are risks here which will become obvious in a more concrete sense as the technology matures. But at least a subset of those risks is already well known, well documented, and well discussed. What happens after the majority of jobs have been automated by AI? Can we meaningfully rely on the US government to provide something like UBI? We saw during the pandemic what may have been sort of like a trial run at UBI. They gave out two $1,200 checks to every US citizen but the overwhelming response after the fact was that that just simply wasn't enough. And of course, the risks that Solana is talking about aren't just related to jobs. AI, if left to its own devices, could self-correct to the point where communication between humans is fundamentally altered. It could change the way we think about money and transactions. It could change the way we think about education. If at some point in the future, automation of jobs requires us to redefine what the word work means, school might no longer be treated as a pipeline into the workforce. It could become something completely different. Some world leaders have been more proactive in identifying the risks associated with unrestricted AI growth. China's Cyberspace Administration, for example, published draft regulations for generative AI just last month, and that's not their first set of regulations targeting AI growth. After all, China's not far behind the US, if at all, in how their large language models and the associated technology that uses them stacks up. Lately, I've been watching videos like this and thinking about how the state of AI will influence tech jobs in the months and years to come. And there are kind of two schools of thought on this. There are the AI doomers, whose camp I may sort of be finding myself falling into. These are people who believe that we are rapidly approaching an AI singularity, noting things like massive improvements to GPT technology in a very short time frame, and a timeline where we're now measuring improvements in AI technology on a week-to-week -week basis where just weeks ago we were measuring it on a month-to-month -month basis. Notably, several key figures in this space, like the CEOs of OpenAI, Google DeepMind, and Anthropic, have signed a statement urging world leaders to consider AI growth as just as great of a risk as things like pandemics and nuclear war. So going back to the original topic of this video, how does AI growth affect software development careers? Well, the CEO of NVIDIA says that with generative AI, everybody can be a programmer. That is, soon we won't even need to code anymore. We'll just feed instructions to the data models and they'll do the coding for us. Now. No, ChatGPT hasn't gotten to the point where this is a reality yet. In fact, many of the code and math examples that it spits out are often hilariously incorrect. Side note, I found this out the other day. ChatGPT fails pretty miserably when trying to guess a sequence of numbers. I fed it this sequence, given this series of numbers, what is the next number in this list? 1, 4, 4, 7, 10, 16. And what would be the next one? And it failed miserably several times, even after I basically gave it the rule. And by the way, let me know in the comments if you're able to figure this one out. So AI's math skills are still not great. However, as AI continues to improve at a breakneck pace, approaching this singularity, we'll see problems like the one I just mentioned solved more rapidly as the data sets that these applications are trained on grow by orders of magnitude and the output is further refined by user input. This could mean that AI will soon be able to perform a lot of the traditional tasks of a software engineer much sooner than we had originally thought. So is it almost time to start actively dissuading people from studying software engineering, at least traditional software engineering, in something like a four-year degree or a boot camp? I think probably not just yet. Here's the other side of the argument. The subtle nuances and many layers of complexity in software architecture will probably be forever out of reach of large language models unless they can somehow figure out how to meaningfully ingest contextual information about the problem. I'll give a concrete example. In my day to day, in my nine to five, I work on a React front end of a healthcare administration platform. It basically lets healthcare professionals administer clinical trials to patients at home and 
a lot of the visual content on the pages is traditional React TypeScript stuff. Components, modules, pages, grids, routing, stuff like that. Surely AI could probably whip up a lot of this stuff pretty easily. For example, code up a grid system that shows various metrics for clinical trial participants. But what happens when specific domain knowledge is needed to figure out how to create complex interactions between services? For example, let's say we need to build a custom query language on the front end that allows the user to filter various criteria about the participants displayed. It's a complex task, yes, but things like this have been done in the past, and an AI could probably figure out a pretty optimal way to do this. The curveball in this situation, though, is that with the domain knowledge that our team has, the specific knowledge that we have about how this study will need to run and how it will need to run in the future, we know that in the future, this study will probably have to support tens of thousands of participants. This probably means that just fetching all of the tens of thousands of participants at once is no good. We'll probably need to implement some sort of server-side pagination of results, something like that. And that means that when we're considering how to filter the results, we need to take into consideration that every time we construct one of these custom query filter things, we may need to send an additional network request to fetch more participant data, more paginated results that will satisfy the filter query criteria. Now, this knowledge that we may in the future need to support many, many participants may be something that the AI could have figured out and optimized for on its own. But more realistically, it's probably an implementation detail that the AI could have only known if it somehow gained inside access to our chat logs, conversations, historical data about how similar companies have tackled problems like this in the past. So this kind of opens up an interesting question. Sort of the logical next step for training these models for software engineering might look like something like training a private instance of ChatGPT on things like our Slack chats, our Jira board tickets and comments, our technical documentation, etc. By the way, I said it needed to be a private instance of one of these AI services because divulging proprietary company code to one of these large language models is a huge no-no. Just look at what happens to the engineers at Samsung who basically copied and pasted a huge swath of code into ChatGPT and then got canned for it. So if large language models don't have access to all of this rich contextual information, then it's kind of just like in the same way that a TI-80 calculator doesn't necessarily make you a mathematician or a physicist, AI for generating code is not necessarily going to make everybody a software engineer. And shout out to my friend Dan for that astute analogy. What's more likely is that AI will just become another class of tools that requires nuanced contextual and technical knowledge to use efficiently. And this is why I say to people all the time, if you want to be a viable software engineer, if you, if you want to have a shot in the field in the next coming years, the software engineers who will have longevity in their careers, who will have success, are gonna be the ones who can most effectively work these tools into their workflow. We're gonna have to stay two steps ahead. And as for me, for a software engineer currently working in the field, I certainly hope this is the case. One of the reasons why AI seems to be struggling so mightily with coding specifically is that the, these language models are a huge aggregate of many, many different data sources, including the data that users input while using something like ChatGPT. So it's retrained on those inputs in order to create the outputs. This means if I ask ChatGPT a coding question and I input a piece of code that, for example, has a syntax tax error in it and the AI doesn't pick up on that, it may in turn be trained on that erroneous piece of code, meaning there's enormous potential for these language models to become corrupted by incorrect data. However, again, AI is advancing exponentially. So who's to say it might not be just a matter of months or weeks before these bugs are smoothed out. In any case, it's certainly an interesting time to be in tech. And I anticipate that in the coming years, we'll see some absolutely incredible developments in the space or some horrible dystopia. <laughs>